months ago, I did a review on Pokemon Battle Revolution for the Wii, which, while it looked good, really didn't have much to offer in terms of a game. Especially following games like Pokemon Coliseum and XD, it kind of felt like a disappointment. But what about the first couple of games that came out that were in 3D for Pokemon? The first one we have is Pokemon Stadium, or unofficially over here, it's called Pokemon Stadium Zero because, well, it never came out in North America. So, was it a good thing it was left out, or maybe it was potentially good? Let's find out. Wow, this is fancy. It's like I'm at Nationals or World Championship. So we get the option of battling the 3D Pokedex, which came out a decade before it actually became a thing, and the closest thing the N64 had to the Super Game Boy. The Pokemon Transfer Pack allowed you to use Pokemon you have in your games in 3D, or let you play your games on a big screen TV. Yay! For the battling, we get Free Battle, which you can play against your friends with the Transfer Pokemon, or you can use Rental Pokemon. Which most of the rental Pokemon are a vile form of other Pokemon, excluding Pikachu. But if you miss your unevolved Pokemon, you have the 3D Pokedex. And there is a tournament mode where you get to fight against other trainers to become the very best. Each with different leveling systems. There's level 1 to 30, which I would say is the beginner mode. Level 50 to 55, which is kind of what we see in VGC today. These are really tiresome to get through. I mean, take a look at how long it takes for the hit points to go down. But besides that, there's really not much to say about this game. I could complain and call it a competition card that costs money to make, but that was kind of the plan. Besides having Pokemon in 3D, the intention of this game was for kids in Japan to have a game where they could go against teams that were actually used in Nintendo competitions back in the late 90s. Yeah, competitive Pokemon have been around much longer than people think. Even with that in mind, it doesn't feel complete. The proof is with the difficulty, besides how long these matches contain, the computer can just take you out with a blink of an eye. I know you're supposed to use your Pokemon and you transfer from the cards, but jeez, the balance is horrible! Now after this game came out and after there was some complaints about the difficulty, there was supposed to be another game to follow up after this, which we currently know as Pokemon RPG, which was supposed to be kind of like the Pokemon games, but on a console. Unfortunately though, this game was intended for the N64DD. And if you haven't heard about the DD, well, there's a reason for it. Well, into Pokemon Stadium 2, or as we know as Pokemon Stadium 1. The very first time I got to play this game was in the Pokemon Stadium 2000 tour when I was a child. After winning some matches and getting Mew, I came across a kiosk for people to play it. And I was so hooked I was ready for it. And then it came my birthday and, well, surprise! Ooh, I love that intro! In this game, along with the tournament modes, you get to Gym Leader's Castle, where you get to fight against the Gym Leaders from the game, Elite Four, your rival, and Mewtwo. And you can do it all again? Yay! Now let's take a look at Pokemon Stadium 2, or in Japan, Pokemon Stadium Gold and Silver. Mmm, I love that intro too! In this one, we also get the same thing as Pokemon Stadium 1, or Pokemon Stadium 1s. This time we get the Team Rocket in red on top of the gym leaders. That's cool, I guess. And battling people from the games get really boring, which it can. Once again, there's tournament options in the form of Stadium mode, which is the main thing to this game. We get different tiers to battle with. And Pika and Little and Petite Cups are meant for low level Pokemon. And the little cup is mostly for baby Pokemon. Poke Cup, which is kind of like VGC flat battles used today. Then, if you're really hardcore, there's the Prime Cup in Pokemon Stadium 1 and Challenge Cup in Pokemon Stadium 2. And be prepared for the legendaries who were ungodly powerful back in these games. Whether you're using your own Pokemon or rental Pokemon, how can you be prepared for these? I mean, sometimes it's obvious what will be used, like the gym leaders, other times, it'll be a complete blindside. Well, along with copies of the game, my parents also gotten me the strategy guides for them. Now we have sites like Cerebi and Bulbapedia, but back then, this was the closest thing you could do to be prepared. Even with the strategy guide helping you out, battling gets kind of boring fast. What do I mean by that? Well, it's not as slow paced as the first Pokemon Stadium in Japan was. Every time a Pokemon makes an attack, it gives its cool little animation to go along with it, even if the attack doesn't connect at all. Now in the Game Boy games, you could actually disable the battle animation to make things go much quicker. In Pokemon Stadium and Pokemon Stadium 2, there is no such option. Which makes these battles dull and frustrating at the same time. I mean, you do get prizes for your hard work. Everyone remembers surfing Pikachu, Psyduck with Amnesia, 
Gligar with Earthquake, and Farfetch with... Okay, who really used Farfetch? But these are received for beating both the Gym Leader's Tower and the Stadium Mode. That's over 60 matches to complete. Why do this? Even as a kid, I would have switched out to a new game before then. Okay, maybe my hype died over these games pretty quickly, but... Can you blame me? Who wants to go through all that? Even official tournaments don't drag on this long. I feel like I'm missing something here. I thought I covered every- Ooh, the kids club! When the battling got way too much, there was a kids club that eased my mind. AKA, minigame heaven. I actually found myself playing this more than the stadium mode or the gym leader castle as a kid. In this mode, you can play with three friends or three computers and see who's best at this Mario Party clone. And it was actually pretty fun. While some of these I can't really stand like the Drowsy game and the Atkins Toss which really felt like crap shoots, the rest of these are pretty memorable. Aww, look at the Togepi! Silly Delibird. He's trying to lift a piano. Hey, Pokemon did Beyblading first. Someone's gonna sue. As a bonus in Pokemon Stadium 2, you can actually do trivia and see how much you know about Pokemon. Before I forget, in Pokemon Stadium 2, we had the Academy where, call me impressed, but it was really informative for anyone who wanted to get serious about battling back then. We do have sites like Nugget Bridge and Smogon to teach us how to do battling seriously. To have all that information on a cartridge was actually pretty awesome. Unfortunately, Pokemon tournaments were really scarce in North America at the time, so I had to rely on recess and summer camp in order to use these things I learned here. While this trip down memory lane was actually pretty fun, despite the fact to get the full experience out this game, you had to have the Generation 1 and 2 games and the transfer pack. Which I can understand for back then, if you had Pokemon Stadium 1 or 2, you'd most likely have the original Game Boy games. The only games I think really did 3D Pokemon any justice before X and Y were Pokemon Coliseum and XD Gale of Darkness. Not only did it have various ways to battle, including linking up your games to the console, but it actually had a full-blown story to it. And while I can't speak for every fan of Pokemon, I would really love to see a consoleized RPG game for Pokemon again. While they're decent at most today, I will still hold a special place for Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2, because they were just part of my childhood. Well, at least the American ones. So until next time, this is Remember This. Take care. Jigglypuff seen from above. Well, along with getting copies of the game, my parents also got me strategy guides. Um...